Shadow Binders is back in stock on shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. And now on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the Black Widow box office projections because there's been a lot of talk about. Yeah, I was totally going to say, they're gonna, all going on about how it's going to break records. But then usually if you read it, isn't it like, well, for the pandemic or some like fine print caveat? On a Tuesday during a pandemic, Black Widow is going to break records. Yeah, we're going to talk about that because, you know, for all the uh, cheerleading that a lot of media outlets have been doing for Black Widow, that it's going to make bank. Uh, now we've even got the rap sort of being like, mm, it might not do as well as we thought it was going to do. Mm -hmm. It might not do as well. Now, I still think it's going to do good, but the fact that they're like, can this movie, can this Marvel movie make more than $100 million during the summer when a lot of movie theaters are open again? Uh, will it or what? I mean, that's just kind of crazy that well, that's where we're at. One point I want to make, though, is when they ran the Black Widow trailer, like in China, it performed very well. Mm. When they ran like the Shang-Chi trailer in China, they panned the hell out of it. So it is possible it'll do do pretty well there, too, because I guess it had like a 97% approval rating in mm. China as well. So it is, it's possible it could do really well, if I'm, if I'm being fair. Okay, well, we'll be fair. We'll talk about it. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 206,000 uh, subs. Uh, thank you. I almost said million. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I got right. That was a jump. Twice what PewDiePie's got. Well, also I'm being investigated for cheating now. So, yeah, right? you know. Uh, yeah, because I saw the million up here on the screen. So, yeah, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how Black Widow is going to break records. It's going to be this big deal. And I was like, oh, my God, it's good. And it's like, no, no, for, for the pandemic, you have to disclaim that. Now, what's interesting is that Quiet Place 2 actually surpassed 100 million at the box office. For the U.S. Yeah. So when there's let's 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 okay. let's talk about this. So coming from the rap and look, people were posting yesterday on Twitter. I think Nerdrotic, Gary from Nerdrotic actually posted that there were many, many seats available. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, we've seen it before when seats were sold out. Nobody's butts were in the theater. <laughs> Captain Marvel. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I had a hairball. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a cat. It was gas. It's you an know. alien. Yeah, that's right. It's, 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 yeah. All right. So they're saying the wrap, even for Marvel reaching 100 million plus opening, will be difficult. Before the summer began, analysts and distributors alike warned that no one should expect, expect the blockbuster to pass 100 million opening weekend. But yeah, here we are. Uh, it took them two weeks to get there, but still. So they're that's... basically saying they're trying to surpass it in opening weekend. Opening okay. weekend, yeah. I'm trying to follow along here. If there's any title that might have a puncher's chance, a punch. What the fuck does that mean? What's a puncher's chance? A puncher's chance. That sounds like that sounds like old timey whiny 1920s. Like, oh, Jim had a puncher's chance no, of getting with it that fine a, lady. It would have a fisticuffs chance. He had. He had. He's, he's, he has a fisticuffs chance of fisting that fine young lady down the street. Um, anyway, if there's any title that might have a puncher's chance of reaching its Black Widow, uh, the first Marvel movie in two years will open on 4,100 screens. So we're not closed anymore. Mm -hmm. And enters like almost all MCU films with strong reviews as critics have given it 83. Yeah, that's, on, that's great. That's glowing. That's so strong. <laughs> In addition, Fandango is reporting the film is not only setting new highs on site for post post pandemic right. presets. Post pandemic presets. When did when is post pandemic technically counting? Like a month ago? In the last month, we hit records. You know, I mean, post pandemic. Post pandemic. Are we out of the pandemic? I don't even know what are you talking about. Have they decided? And, and then, we, is it over? In a lot of places, if you're going to go by the guidelines that they would count as post pandemic because everything opened back up again, you're talking literally since like what end of May. So it's had the boat past post pandemic pre sales. I'm like, what's that sounds like literally May of this year? Um, per, um it's gonna outperform Doctor Strange, Spider Man and Homecoming. Homecoming. I doubt it's gonna outperform Spider Man Homecoming. I don't think so. Uh, such numbers show that at least the presence of Disney Plus shows like Loki haven't diminished fans' interest in People anything. People care about Loki, they don't give a you know, and they care about Black Widow, but it's other things they don't really care about. But Disney has not been promoting this effectively they really haven't and but beyond that like this is the last movie with an og avenger and a character and she's already dead and she's already dead 
you know, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's going to, I don't think it's going to bomb. I really don't. But the Eternals is going to be a better litmus test of where we're at with the MCU. Do you, do you want to hear something funny, though? They're already trying to make you, it's, it's kind of a Captain Marvel move here. They're trying this already. They had a, a like a featurette and they had Feige on there talking and he's like, and this is going to lead into the phase four and there's going to be some characters that are probably going to appear in phase four. So I think they're trying to get people to go to it because they feel like if you miss it, you're like, oh, okay, well, this is the last one for phase three. So starting to phase four, it's going to be new and I don't have to, I don't have to go watch it. They're trying to find ways to leverage that to make you go see it because you're going to miss something moving into phase four if you don't go see black widow first they're literally doing a captain marvel move on the on the the rollout for this yeah captain marvel like they sidelined her for most of endgame they they basically tricked a lot of people into going to see it like you have to see captain mm -hmm, marvel to understand part of this, yeah moving into the next film yeah you have to you have to um so it says why both disney and independent projectors have black Widow easily topping F9 for the highest post-pandemic opening. Again, post-pandemic. Disney projecting a $75 million launch while trackers are expecting 80, Again, post-pandemic launch. But 4,100 screens. That's a lot of screens. Well, yeah, they're going to double down. But they also remember, too, that they're also doing this as a premier access title. Yeah, um, they Are they going to suddenly try to roll those numbers in? They wouldn't let you count them for other things like Raya and other things. They kept them hidden. Um, are they going to suddenly count that in the totals now? Oh, they, trust us. Trust us. Black Widow, biggest MCU opening of all time when you factor in the Disney Plus numbers. Can we see some receipts for that? No, you cannot. On a, on a, no, on you a, cannot. Between this hour and this hour on this day of this year. <laughs> it was the most streamed thing ever. No, I mean, I'm joking. In Turkey. I, I think Black Widow isn't a, yeah, right. I think Black Widow is going to get, is going to get numbers, but you have to put it in perspective here. And I don't think it's going to bomb, most likely, even though it, Disney has done a really shitty job with this because people have been waiting for this so long. And at this point, a lot of people have lost interest because it's taken so long and they refuse to do the premiere access or anything before this because they want it theatrical. And now you have the stars coming out and saying it's a, you know, very feminist type show. It's like people stop talking because you're turning people off and yeah. they won't stop talking. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think this one's going to bomb. But they're gonna, they're gonna. If that, if it doesn't perform as well, they're just gonna, they're gonna some find somehow. Well, because of post pandemic something or other. That's why it's the pandemic's fault. Yeah. Well, now we've got, you know, there's, there's, they talked about, they talked about the Disney Plus, but they're talking about the Samba TV, yeah, which is actually. Yeah, they do do the metrics, yes. Yep. And they said that they, you can basically add like Cruella, you could add another 20 million to it from PVOD. So they probably will have some estimate of what. It well, makes. if you go through Samba, Disney will never tell you. Unless it does really well, and then they'll, then they'll tell you at the next investor call. Yeah. So uh, they're talking about China. Yeah, I mean, look, things are never going to go back to what they were before the pandemic. Like, like it's it's broken forever. It's changed forever. Well, I expect Black Widow to perform better in China than Shang-Chi. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, because yeah, uh, China is not very happy with, with the Shang-Chi uh, rollout and the trailers they've seen. But they love Black Widow. It's so weird. All these movies Disney have, have been uh, designing for China don't seem to be testing very well playing very well in china no i'll say like ariel Maybe <laughs> they like gingers all these movies that disney plans to make <laughs> bank on in china that just doesn't work out the way they plan no um so i don't know uh it'll be interesting to watch i mean look it already feels like this movie's been out because it's it does like i guess it feels like you're two years it. late because i keep trying to get interest by giving you more and more and more at this yeah. point it's like i kind of already seen the movie it feels like so I think a lot of movies are going to hit this problem, though, mm. because it's been that they've been drug out for too long and it's kind of like the interest has waned and people are already moving on to things coming out next year to focus on. Yeah, it feels like leftovers. Like this, these are the leftover movies that were yeah. supposed to come out last year and now we're just kind of pushing them out this year. Well, it's like last season. Ugh. Yeah, well, it's like Ghostbusters. Like, you know, people are like, didn't that come out already? No, it's yeah. Like, no, it didn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I'm kind of like, you know, eh, I was excited. Now. now I'm like, eh, I'll see it, I guess. Yes, but it feels like it feels like if you missed a movie in the theater and you catch it on HBO whenever you get the chance. Yeah, it, you know, that's how there's like, like a whole year of this. It feels like. Yeah, once you break that habit, like you know, we didn't go see Rise of Skywalker. It becomes very still haven't seen it. Still haven't seen it. Uh, it becomes very easy to be like, oh yeah, I missed that one. And then you know, as the weeks and months tick by, it's like, oh, I forgot, I didn't even watch that movie. Every time I go, there's a lot of Disney movies like we haven't watched either. And every time I, I feel like, well, maybe I'll give a shit to watch it today, and then I'm like, nope. 
still don't give a shit. I still haven't seen Soul. I I I wanted. No, you to see wanted it. to see it so bad. I never had interest. In I that wanted that. to see it. Uh, I, I just thought it was it was interesting. It looked very much like a Pixar. Well, we still haven't watched Luca yet. Either. We haven't watched Toy Story four either. Oh, I have no desire to see. I saw parts of Toy Story four. I'm like, ah, screw That's this. That's this thing. It's like you get to the place where you're just like, you just it's easy. You go from having to watch every one for your job to just I just don't care anymore. Pretty much. So we'll see how many people care mm -hmm. come this weekend. We're gonna wrap this up. Mm -hmm. All right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.